Hey everyone, Monkey Wrench Mike, as you can see, we're in the back of the Saab. Yep, today it's a quick little video because I'm worried about the coolant system. So we are going to follow the book. Yes, I have the red Saab Bible over there and we're going to diagnose a couple of things and see if we can keep this old girl running just as cool and smoothly as she can. Well, I can't get her to run because she won't start right now because I need a starter. But that's okay, we're gonna focus on the cooling system, which means we're gonna test the coolant temperature sender, we're going to replace the thermostat, and of course we're going to drain and then refill the antifreeze. And this duck is so excited. All right, here is our Red Saab Bible. Yep, the official service manual for 1988. And if I go to page 261, it kind of talks about the coolant system, and there are some checks that you can do to make sure that you are going uh, just as well as possible, we are going to, we're going to check the temperature gauge, quick check, which is this right here. We're going to do a radiator fan check, which is this right here. And we're going to do the thermostat, changing of the thermostat, which is partly right there. And on into the next page. Right there are my directions. So, first part is really, really easy. We're going to do a temperature check. Um, this right here, as it says, is the temperature sender. It's below the distributor on the front of the engine. We put this, we attach it to ground, give it some power, and if the needle on the dash does something, then we know what is good and what is bad. So let's do that right now. That is your temperature gauge sending unit, and this is what attaches to it. Okay, so look how gross that looks right there. What we're supposed to do is attach this to ground, turn on the ignition, and then kind of see what's going on. So let me find a little, a good ground, which would probably be this piece right here. Okay, then we turn on the ignition and we check and see what's a happening. Now we're gonna give her some power. We're gonna watch the gauge right here. If it moves upwards, then it's faulty. Ah! <laughs> so it's maxed out. Does that mean my temperature gauge is bad? I don't know, it seemed like it was working. I can't work with you guys right here. You know that, right? I can't, you gotta let me work. Go play, you go play. Don't get in the car, it's not ready for you yet, okay? So we have that happening right there. Let's go ahead and check out the radiator fan. We're doing a little quick check right here. This is gonna determine whether our main fan which is right there, is faulty or not. So we first, we check fuse number 25 and fuse number six. So I gotta tell you, I love how far uh, Saab did this. Okay, everything is labeled, and the more videos about these cars I watch, the more I learn that they're really like an aircraft where everything is labeled, so you can get to it very, very easily. Um, what is this? Fuse 25 and number six. So 25, 21, 23, 25 is this number 30 right here. And then fuse number six is also a 30. Sorry about the camera work. There we go. Uh-oh. Well, that's our problem right there. Look at that. That's that doesn't look good to me. That looks kind of blown. What about number six? Six is right here. Uh, six is fine. So it looks like 30 is our problem. Let's see if I have a 30. I need to go through, and I don't think I've even checked these. Let's just go through and, and, and check all these fuses very, very quickly. Well, I've gone through here and I've tested them all and 30 is the only one that did not make this do this, okay? So you can touch it on the top. I'm just gonna do this on the bottom real quick so you can hear the sound. There you go, nothing. <whistles> hear that? That's what you want. And you just basically go down the line. <whistles> See? <whistles> so all the fuses are good except for number 30, this 31 right here, and I'm gonna keep these, these are my little extra ones, and I'll replace this one, and hopefully it's not gonna pop. So this will be good. So we have that replaced. Now we're gonna do this, the main cooling fan thermostat switch, you short it using a screwdriver and the fan should come on. Okay, so let's get that active and we'll see what happens. Hopefully this cooperates. 
We have two little back probes attached. I can't take the little rubber boot off because it doesn't exist. So what I need to do is just get down in here and it's right under here. I just can't see anything. I'm having a heck of a time today, I'm sorry. There we go. Okay. That's great news. Okay, they work. Now, hopefully we didn't blow the fuse. Let's check the fuse real quick. And then we get to move on to the thermostat. Okay, well, as you can hear, we have loosened our overflow cap. I'm probably making a mess. Am I or is it going in the bucket? No, we're missing, of course. Let me show you where it's coming out. There you go. That right there, there's a little nozzle way back in there that's kind of hard to get to. That is how you drain all your radiator fluid. And there's no, I guess I could have attached a hose to it. Um, but yeah, it looks like there's a lot of crud in there. That, yeah, that's a problem. So the thermostat is right in this area right here. So I think, no, right in this area right here. So I've got to take off my um, whoo, idle control valve, which I think this is right here to get to the thermostat. We'll take off this hose um, and just kind of see what's going on. We have the thermostat housing, which is free. I've got a bolt right here on top, a bolt on bottom. The bolt on top, ho, ho, ho. You want to talk about scary. Look at that. And this, it's just, it came out like a chunk. I, I soaked it for a while. I had lots of PB blaster. This is the bottom bolt. This is the top one. I've removed the hose. This is what the idle control valve sits on. And hopefully now, I can get it out without having to remove this pipe. Here we go. There it is. Oh, you know what? That looks pretty good. What does this look like? That's okay. Well, you know I do best when I'm doing things that don't have to be done. So you just sit right there. Ugh, ugh. All kinds of parts right there. We'll take this out. Take a look at what lies beneath. There you go. This actually looks really, really good. I probably should have just left it. You know? I probably should have. I think it's working perfectly. All right, let's find mine and compare. One old thermostat, one new thermostat, both are motor rads. Ha! What are the odds? I think that was working perfectly. Anyway, we'll get this installed. We will clean up this outer area right here. Okay, I got the new gasket on the thermostat and everything, it's gonna be fine. We'll put it back on, button it up, then we get to fill the system, then we get to check it out. We have everything assembled, except for one vacuum hose that goes right to here. I'm glad I remembered that. We have filled the reservoir with antifreeze right here, as you can see. We'll kind of lightly put this on. This is your bleed screw, and I filled it up until stuff is coming out. It's very um, important to bleed the system. So hopefully, she wants to start. I don't know. I'm having this starter. I've ordered a new one. It's just not here yet. So I'm just giving her a little extra boost of juice. And hopefully she'll want to do something for us. Then we got to let her warm up. Blade the system and the video is complete. Here we go. Please start. Come on. There it is. There you go, girl. Come on. My goodness, that was difficult. Now you have to be happy, okay? I cleaned out the idle control valve. You know, you spray carb cleaner and you shake it and you go, doo -doo -doo -doo. there's a little door inside of it. So I did clean that out for a second time.
We're gonna turn this on warm. Get that stuff circulating throughout the whole system. Look at this, I still gotta find a radio. If you have any radio recommendations, let me know. But look at her. Still gotta get belts. But once she's running, she sounds pretty good, doesn't she? I just gotta see where she's leaking. I did get a smoke machine, so that's gonna be great. That's gonna be fun to do. We have been idling for about 25 minutes and I can't get it to go any higher than that. So I'm gonna assume that the uh, new thermostat is opening and closing just fine. The fans have not come on yet, which is, is I think it's okay until it reaches a certain temperature, then they'll come on. But the thermostat itself is keeping everything closed. I haven't done the air conditioner because I know that doesn't work. That will kick on the fans as well, but there's not enough Freon to make the um, condenser and the compressor and everything to come on. So we're gonna leave it like that. We're gonna call this a huge win. And when bleeding the system, all you really have to do is you loosen up the bleeding nipple right here. You add your coolant into here until this starts to come out. When it starts to flow out of here, you're full and it's pretty well bled. Well, I did that and it's just running fine. Okay, I've added a little tape. I know I have a, a leak right here. I've had a leak right here the whole time I've had the car. But listen to her. She does. She sounds really, really good. Now, we are getting some of this out of the tailpipe, which I'm a little bit worried about. That's, that's kind of a mess. Um, what do you think? What are your, what are your predictions on the car? Is it going to work? You going to go for a ride? Yeah, do you want to go for a ride too? Yeah, well, we can't do it today. That I don't like at all. That's really, really gross. I hope we don't have a head gasket problem. After sitting for so many years, that is certainly a possibility. But I got to say, I think this is going to do it for this video right here, folks. I think we're going to, we've, We've taken another major step forward in the transition of this car from just sitting in the field to actually getting back out on the road. So I think that is fantastic. Oh wait, look, they just came on. The fans have come on. And now they're off. They work, they work perfectly. What's our temperature? What's the temperature? See, the temperature is still right there. So we've got our, we, uh, oh yeah, we're fixing this car like nothing. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for another video on the 1988 Saab 900. Thank you very much to the person who suggested I get the Saab Bible. Yeah, I love it. It is guiding me through this whole process. And of course, everybody here guiding me through the whole process as well. We'll have another video on this car. I'm looking for help with the uh, Janus car. So stay tuned for that. And I've got one, two, three, Four other cars we're getting work on and the big news is the mercedes wagon it's getting painted right now it's going to be a huge transformation so we'll have that video coming up for you as well all right everybody that's gonna do it for now thanks for watching we're back with another one very very soon okay bye bye everybody say goodbye they want to see you oh you're a camera hog you're a camera hog yes sir all right look what's happening i just turned the car off and that one fan right there came on. I think it's just trying to cool off the turbocharger maybe, because that's where it is. But they both came on when I needed them to. So, yay, yay Saab.